are the biggest river giants still out there? They are so extremely rare. If you want to catch a big fish, you need to suffer. Now, Jakob's trekking into the rainforest and off the grid to battle a prehistoric predator. She's here, I can feel it. There's no telling who will win. Jakob? It's risky, but I have to do it. Or his queen of the Amazon, the massive Arapaima. February 16th, 8 a.m., at an undisclosed airport in South America. Okay, fishing rods. It's day one of a seven-day expedition. <laughs> Extreme angler and celebrated explorer, Jakob Wagner is on a quest to fish the world's freshwater giants. A devoted conservationist, he's on a mission to raise awareness of these threatened species by finding and revealing the power and beauty of these whoppers before it's too late. Thousands of miles from his native Czech Republic, he knows time is running out. Overfishing may have wiped the Amazon's ultimate river beast, the Arapaima gigas, off the planet. What about this bag? Jakob joins up with a local crew. To protect his rare target's hidden habitats, he keeps his final destination a secret. The plane is quite small, but I think we can make it. Hopefully. This plane is already full, so I have to take another plane. As an adventurer and experienced survivalist, Jakob immerses himself in the culture and environment of his target fish, often living by his wits, experience, and training. Okay, let's go. I'm sweating already. It's so hot. Okay. Okay, los vamos, compañeros. The river is incredibly low, really low. Jakob can only estimate where, or even if, he will meet his monster fish. The Amazon basin stretches more than two and a half million square miles. To succeed on each leg of his mission, he'll need to go deeper and deeper into one of the most remote locations on Earth. Once you get to the Amazon and you spend some time here, you have to love Amazon rainforest or you hate it straight away. Jakob faces an extreme showdown of man versus super predator. Here in the world's largest river system, more than 2,000 fish species thrive, but only one incredible hunter is the biggest beast of them all. The Arapaima, the largest fish in the world's largest river. One of the coolest things about Arapaima is their size. Arapaima can grow to more than eight feet long, weighing in at a scale busting 400 pounds. They are so extremely rare. Even if you see our Pama, one small one, your trip is, is amazing. Meet some of freshwater's toughest living fossils. Apex killers, so well designed, these prehistoric powerhouses still rule the Amazon food chain. Our Pama are fascinating prehistoric fish. Like armor on a tank, large bony scales protect them from other predators and a rapid growth rate helps them outsize all other fish in the river. Jakob has received permission to land in a remote Amazon tribal village. The tribe calls themselves simply the people. Until the 1950s, the people lived completely isolated from Western civilization. Now, to protect their indigenous culture, they invite only a few outsiders to briefly stay with them. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. 
Jakob has enlisted their help as expedition guides and crew. Ciao. Melinka. Ah. Jakob's transport plane also offers the community a valuable and rare opportunity for long distance transportation. They are very happy that we are here because they have two planes now. They can go with the kids to hospital and come back. So it's great. Jakob has just seven days to find a Whopper Arapaima. Under threatening skies, there's no time to waste. The gear must be unloaded quickly. A constant danger looms, rain. The sound of raindrops hitting the water can drive the fish deep below the surface, away from Jakob's baited hook. Once the Amazon rain season begins, Jakob's expedition could be doomed. Here, the tribal Indians call the Arapaima Paiche. Paiche? Paiche, mucho Paiche, dice. Okay. And una más laguna aquí. Ah, de acá arriba. Sí. Sí. Claro. Claro. Listo. Ya están listos los bolos. Bolos? Sí. Okay. Jakob begins a six-hour journey, following a tributary that he hopes will lead him to a lagoon ideally suited to giant arapaima. Deep in the jungle, Jakob's looking for the shallowest water he can find. The lower the water, the better his chances of pulling these massive hunters from their lairs. Shallow water brings arapaima close to the surface, making them easier to stalk. We are here in the end of dry season. The river is really low. This is the perfect timing for an arapaima. But if the rains come early, water levels will rise and his strategy will fail. Ninety miles downriver, Jakob arrives at his target destination. Finally here. An advanced team has set up the base camp with his gear and supplies. For the next few days, this will be home. It was a long day today. We had to drive boat for many, many hours. And yeah, it's dark, but we have to start fishing for our palm as soon as possible, because if we have rain, it's nearly impossible to catch our palm because they are scared of the rain. So let's call it a day. Early morning, expedition day two of seven. To find one of the Amazon's most elusive river beasts, Jakob Wagner is trekking deeper into the rainforest. In the dry season, an isolated lagoon is the holy grail of arapaima habitats. In the shallow pools, the predators spawn and hunt. I hope I can find lagoon over there, so this is not wasted effort. Hunting for a lagoon isn't Jakob's only obstacle. The Amazon heat is extraordinary. 90 degree highs, 95% humidity. Finally, a lagoon. It was a long way, but the lagoon is here. So I'm very happy about it. It looks good, it's a beautiful lagoon. Okay, let's put a canoe together. Jakob quickly assembles the tangle of aluminum and plastic into a working fishing boat. He's had practice on many expeditions before. Okay, now it begins. Look like a canoe. For Jakob, lagoons are more than the perfect arapaima hunting ground. Let's go fishing. 
they're also a clue to the prehistoric predator's survival. During the dry season, water levels drop and lagoons like this get cut off from the river. As water temperatures rise, oxygen levels decrease. Many fish species can't survive. But arapaima have adapted in an exceptional way. What's very special about arapaima, when we are in the end of dry season, some lakes are nearly completely dry out, so other fish die. But arapaima can survive because they breathe atmospheric oxygen. When it comes to breathing, arapaima are a double threat. In deeper water, they breathe like most fish, absorbing oxygen through blood in their gills. But in oxygen-starved shallow lagoons, lung-like tissue in their swim bladders let the predators breathe above water. Jakob watches, keeping one hook baited with a second one on standby. Every five to 10 minutes, Arapaima surface for a gulp of air. Only then will he cast his baited hook. I have to be ready to cast any time because you just don't know when they go up to gulp the air. But soon, trouble. There's fierce competition for the bait from a mob of notorious flesh eaters. Ah, they are taking my bait. Yeah, ah. Ah, piranhas are taking my bait, you can see it. Uh, piranha attacked my bait. That's the biggest problem here in these lagoons because it's full of them. And when you see our palma, you have like five, ten seconds. You know, after the bait hit the water, then happened this. Piranha have a fearsome reputation as killer fish that attack in packs, overwhelming prey, stripping their victims' flesh to the bone. But the piranha's mob mentality isn't due to a killer appetite. It's a defensive strategy. Swimming in groups ups the chances of spotting approaching predators and lowers a piranha's chances of getting eaten. Jakob knows the more fish he encounters, the more clues he uncovers about the complex Amazon ecosystem. To understand his target predator, the arapaima, he has to know how and where they live. Quickly changing his bait, Jakob wants to get a look at one of the biting beasts in the flesh. He confirms it. A piranha feeding frenzy is on. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, it's feeding frenzy. Piranha, piranha, yes. That's piranha. This fish has been eating my bait fish all the time. Piranha, and big one, white piranha. These lagoons are full of piranhas. It's a good fish, big one. Okay, don't eat my bait. If these ravenous piranha keep devouring Jakob's bait fish, he'll have no chance of catching an arapaima. He must find a new lagoon. But to go deeper into the rainforest, Jakob needs the help of the Amazon's most experienced experts. Buenos dias. Jakob has arranged to meet two indigenous Amazon Indians, Namo and Ginto. No one on Earth knows this rainforest like they do. And Namo and Ginto have seen massive arapaima, the fish they call paiche. But the clock is ticking. And as rain threatens, with less than a week to find his target, Jakob must move on, fast. Uh. 
Okay, Gintov? Yeah. I have Gintov here with me. He's not fisherman, he doesn't know anything about fishing, but he's hunter and he knows the forest better than anyone else. We are carrying the canoe to the lagoon and we have a long way in front of us. Carrying a canoe through the rainforest in oppressive heat and humidity is both a physical and navigational challenge. There's no truck, no road, not even a trail. We have to carry the canoe overland because there is no other way how to get to the lagoon. We have to lower the canoe in the water and we have to be really quiet because I don't want to spook the fish. I can really hear our pamas. Jakob listens for Arapaima surfacing to breathe. Okay. I can hear them. They are here. I've seen five Arapaimas until now. And I would say at least two of them are well over 200 pounds. They come up to the surface, breathe the air. I have to be ready to cast. You never know when they go up. In these remote waters, giant arapaima are both fished and feared. Local legend says these monster fish embody the son of an Amazon chief, banished to the bottom of the river. Many here believe to this day, the spirit seeks its revenge by leaping out of the water and dragging fishermen to the depths, never to be seen again. While these legends may be far-fetched, there's no denying the awesome power of these river beasts. But the biggest threat to Jakob's mission isn't the Arapaima's menacing brawn, it's human overfishing. In the dry season, lagoon-locked Arapaima are a popular catch. Indians hunt for Arapaima by spear. That's the most common fishing technique for them. And it's easy to kill our pama like this because they go up and gulp the air so they can see our pama on the surface and then it's very easy to spear them. Indigenous tribes have fished sustainably for centuries, but commercial net fishing is pushing arapaima populations down to dangerously low levels. Losing this top predator would rob us of a precious species and disrupt the balance of an entire ecosystem. Today, the largest specimens may already be impossible to find. They are definitely here. I've seen them, I've heard them, but so far I haven't had any luck. Gindo, Gindo, okay, okay. After hours on this lagoon, Jakob has a chance. Bye, bye. His only hope is if the arapaima takes the bait before the piranha. Bite ya! Bite ya! Come on! Go, 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 Gindo, go! Fighting the powerful pull, Jakob may have hooked this expedition's uh, ultimate monster. Uh, it's a big fish! Uh, it's a big one! It's the battle explorer and extreme fisherman Jakob Wagner's traveled thousands of miles for. Yet even to an elite angler, the Arapaima is an awesome adversary. She's so strong! That's a big fish. Get on. Better, better, better. No! Ah! It's gone! Ah! Oh. Ah! Ah, that was a monster. 
well over 200 pounds. But maybe I didn't set the hook well. It's difficult to say, you know. I was sitting here all day and then I get it taken. You know, I have no words. Since he was five years old, fishing has been Jakob Wagner's obsession. What I know from my father and mother, I was crazy when I saw water all the time, and even more crazy when I saw a fish in the water. Raised in a family of professional musicians, Jakob's father expected him to follow in his footsteps. But Jakob dared to be different. In my family, I have to say I'm kind of black sheep. Jakob quit music school and left for Australia to become a fishing guide. 11 years later, he holds multiple world records, known and respected worldwide for his catches and conservation efforts. Jakob has devoted his life to some of sport fishing's most immersive and extreme adventures. But now, with threatening rain and just five days left on his Arapaima expedition, he may face his toughest test yet. It should be the best time for Arapaima, but when I see these clouds above me, I'm really scared because it looks like we will have some really hard rains. When you have rain, Arapaimas are scared of it. They don't go up and gull the air. And when you have a lot of rain, the water temperature goes down and they don't want to hunt, they don't want to eat. To wait out the storm. Jakob treks through the rainforest alone, testing his survival skills searching for food. Oil skin rain gear gives him an edge against the weather. When we are in the middle of the Amazon rainforest, you never know what can happen. So it's good to know how to survive here, how to find water and how to find something to eat. So let's see what we can find around here. Jakob spots a tree that could be a lifesaver. One the natives call Pentiwa. The local name of this tree is Pentibua, and the core of this tree is delicious. So that's why I have to get inside. It's difficult to get inside, but I have to. I'm hungry. Okay, nearly there. Mm. Mm. I love it, so good, it tastes like coconut, even the texture looks like coconut. This is my favorite meal in the Amazon. I can definitely live off this for a few days. It's so good. Mm. This vine is really, really wet. It has to be full of water. Let's try to cut it here and extract some liquid to drink. In a worst case scenario, if Jakob became injured and stranded in the jungle, he might survive weeks without steady food. But in such extreme heat, even a day without clean drinking water is dangerous. Mm. 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 It tastes like tree, but it can save my life, especially in dry season. The rain lets up. After a night's rest alone in the rainforest away from base camp, Jakob is ready to resume the hunt. 
for a fabled prehistoric predator. Expedition day three of seven. After fighting packs of piranha and losing a whopper arapaima, Jakob meets up again with his local guide Ginto to press on, heading further into the jungle. Jakob continues his quest for the giant river beast's ultimate territory, the perfect shallow lagoon. Here, I can feel it. Sometimes you can see only small bubbles coming up. This remote lagoon may offer better luck, but fishing for Arapaima requires the vigilance of a stakeout. He needs to be careful and judicious. Jakob may only get two or three casts all day. Arapaima fishing is more hunting. Actually, you cast on the fish, so you have to spot the fish and then you cast on it. You are not sitting on the bank and just waiting, you know, it's really hunting, it's challenging. After more than an hour, Jakob spots an arapaima surfacing for air. More movement under the water suggests there may be several arapaima close by, and one may be a whopper. It's very big fish. Yeah. My rod is bent over. Ah. Ah. Jakob gets his first real glimpse of the whopper fish. Experience tells him the catch is nearly 200 pounds. That's a big arpaima. Wow. To have this fish on the line is something so unusual so special because this is one of the biggest freshwater fish on our planet. It's a big arapaima! Woo! But there's a problem. The monster fish suddenly dives down deep, straining the line, seeking shelter beneath a fallen tree. Jakob lets out more line as fast as he can. At any moment, the fish could break free. Gento, gento, gento. Yeah, she's in the tree. And now, there's an even bigger danger. The line is tangled on a submerged tree. If the arapaima is unable to surface for air, Jakob's catch will die. No! The fish swam into the submerged tree and the line got entangled. I have to jump in the water and free the line. Hold the rod, hold the rod, hold the rod. Jakob takes a desperate gamble. Okay, I go. Diving in to free the fish could cost him his catch. Now, as extreme angler Jakob Wagner fights to free the trapped arapaima, every second could be fatal to a fish already fighting for species survival. I got it! I got it! Jakob has grabbed the line, but it's hopelessly stuck. Yes, put a tree. He needs to cut away the tangled fishing line, free the arapaima from the tree, and retie the line. It's a little bit risky, but I have to do it. Okay, so now this should be fun. Jakob must be careful to cut the right line. Whoa! This is a big fish. Take the knife. Okay. 
The Arapaima is free. But in the tangle of branches underwater, the line breaks. Any chance to catch and release this ultimate river beast is lost. The line breaked. But, yeah, I wasn't able to stop her. It's, she's just too powerful. Braided line for 100 pounds. I was so close. This was a monster creature. It was fish at least close to 200 pounds. So it's the fish of your lifetime. And this is the true wild arapaima. So everybody's dreaming about this fish. Worse yet, the noise appears to have driven away other arapaima. Now, with little more than three days remaining, Jakob faces a difficult decision. Stay where he is and keep trying, or use up precious fishing hours traveling further on. Back at base camp, Jakob's decision is clear. Keep going. The expedition motors downriver on the hunt for another Arapaima lagoon. We have been driving downstream for several hours, and now I'm trying to find a new lagoon. Jakob knows the odds of finding another giant Arapaima are slim. As researchers uncover more about the freshwater giants, what was once considered one family of fish may actually be more than four. Scientists think that there are different species of Arapaima, and that the biggest one, Arapaima gigas, could be already extinct. The chance that I will find a Rapama in these lagoons, it's very small. This is a very remote place, with no people at all, with no fishing pressure, so maybe I will be lucky and I will find one very special lagoon. Jakob continues downriver, scanning the bank, looking for a stream that could lead to an undiscovered lagoon. It's shallow here, sharp left. Finding an inlet, Jakob wants to create as little commotion as possible. He decides to go in alone, exploring it from his canoe. I spotted a stream here, so let's hope there is a new lagoon inside. <laughs> Jakob makes his way upstream as far as he can. But without his local guide Ginto's help, he'll have to navigate the area on his own. I pedaled quite far, but it looks like it's only a stream in the forest. So I have to press on to find another lagoon. The stream leads nowhere. But there is another discovery along the riverbank. If the Arapaima is the queen of the Amazon, there's another river monster who is the king. Jakob spent his life battling the planet's biggest fish, but he's now facing an anaconda, more than twice as long as any river whopper ever measured. Have a look at this. I just put it in anaconda. This is the biggest snake in the Amazon and actually the biggest snake in the world. Hidden in the tree branches, the anaconda's bulging stomach means only one thing. It's digesting a massive meal, swallowed whole. Look at this beauty. She is huge! Ah. Even large jungle oh. animals like the jaguar can fall prey to anacondas this huge. This anaconda has no problem with humans at all. Look at the body. I mean, I would easily fit inside. Leaving behind one of the rainforest's biggest predators, Jakob cuts through the jungle on foot, 
Prepared for rain in his oilskin gear, he hopes to find a hidden Arapaima lair. Soon, he stumbles upon a smaller, but nearly as dangerous Amazon creature. Aside from the snakes, this is one of the most dangerous animals here in the rainforest. It's yellow scorpion. And no matter of the size, if this one stings me, I will have very, very painful 12 hours. Another miniature menace is an ant with one of the most infamous stings on earth. Look at this. They call them conga and we know it's bullet ants. Have a look at this, they are huge. And I have to be very careful because they bite like crazy and I don't want to be bitten. Bullet ants are known for their nasty stings. 30 times worse than a bee or wasp. Victims say it feels exactly like a bullet wound. It is also known as the 24-hour ant because the pain from the sting is said to last 24 hours. Come on, guy, get home. The search for a new Arapaima hunting ground has taken two full days. Valuable fishing time, lost. Further off the grid than planned, Jakob must leave enough time for a safe return. And now, with intermittent rain, the chances of coming face to face with the queen of the Amazon are growing slim. Expedition day seven. The next morning, Ginto rejoins Jakob to make his final trek through the rainforest in search of the perfect Arapaima lair. Discovering a hidden lagoon, Jakob silently guides his canoe onto the water. Hours pass while Jakob listens for an Arapaima surfacing for a breath of air. With a sudden motion in the water below, Jakob spots his target. As Jakob waits, the Arapaima approaches his baited line. It's huge. Incredible. She took my bait. This may be Jakob's last chance to reel in a whopper Arapaima. This time, Jakob wants to keep the monster fish from diving into the sunken trees and breaking off the line. So he must stay in the middle of the lagoon. Stay in the middle of the lake. Stay in the middle of the lake. His guide, Ginto, paddles backwards as hard as he can, but he's no match for the strength of the massive air My rod is totally bent over. The freshwater giant is in control, dragging the canoe around the lagoon. As the fish fights to free itself, Jakob gets his first good glimpse of his target. He's going to jump. He uses all his strength to hold on. Whoa! This is massive fish. When she jumps in the air and you see this massive body, it's incredible feeling. Beautiful red color, beautiful. Have a look. Amazing fish. Sometimes I have to ask myself, aren't you crazy? fight is as well challenging because in the middle of the fight they can gulp the air and they get the oxygen into the body and they are fresh again so that's why they are so hard fighters that's massive fish this legendary fish isn't done yet it leaps next to the canoe, nearly knocking Jakob into the lagoon. I'm in this tiny canoe, and the canoe is as big as my fish on the line, and it can flip over any time. Did you see it? Oh. 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 
battling hard, explorer, conservationist, and extreme angler Jakob Wagner is caught in an intense tug of war with a monster arapaima. After traveling thousands of miles and trekking six days into the Amazon rainforest, Jakob fights to reel in the legendary freshwater leviathan. This is something incredible. I have so much of adrenaline in my body, so I just don't care. I have to get a fish, you know. That's what I want. Oh, it's so broad as our canoe. And be careful, be careful. Be At last, the Arapaima tires. But Jakob's real test has just begun. The fish is so large, Jakob must go from reeling it to wrangling it. That's the main problem. We have to find a place where I will be able to jump on the fish because this is the only way how I am able to land this monster. This animal is as broad as our canoe. It's just incredible. Look at this fish. Grabbing a fish this big and powerful is extremely dangerous. But the only way to control the thrashing animal is to corral it as close to the canoe as possible. Okay, I hold it. I have it. Okay, now we have to go on the bank. Ginto, we are faster than you with our climb. Keeping a tight grip, Jakob looks for a safe spot to land the massive arapaima. In the lagoon's dense vegetation, the fish could easily escape. Yeah, we are nearly there. Ah, ah, ah. She's so powerful. This lagoon is just full of trees. Jakob has no leverage, and there's no safe spot to land the fish. Okay, okay, stop, stop, stop. How deep is it here? His catch must now become a wrestling match. Ah, you see? I have to... Jakob is literally in over his head as he struggles to hold on to the massive fish. His other guide, Namo, joins the struggle, having seen the commotion from the shore. This fish is exhausted like I am. She's trying to breathe. You just saw it. You just saw it. And she's taking the air. She's gulping the air, the oxygen, and she's fine. She's fine, and you see, we caught this fish with circle hook. The hook is in the beginning of the mouth, and that's the way how it should be. And I love you, baby. <laughs> we just need to hold her a little bit more like this, and then we can release her. Yes, baby. <laughs> this fish is really like dinosaur. It's massive. It's a prehistoric creature. You see these scales? They are bigger than my eyes. It's like stone. Have a look at this tail. Now you can imagine how powerful these animals are. Before releasing the arapaima, Jakob records the astounding measurements. It's 10 feet and one inch long. Incredible fish. My biggest arapaima in my life. The fish's stats are staggering. At four feet, seven inches around, weighing more than 325 pounds. <laughs> it's a world record arapaima. Yet while the fish is truly colossal, giant arapaima are disappearing from the Amazon. Let's release the fish. Thank you. See you next time. Bye bye. As Jakob releases the fish, he renews his dedication to raise awareness for further research and conservation, to keep the world's freshwater beasts hunting the planet for millennia to come. Woo! Thank you. Gracias. Gracias. What an amazing experience.